and welcome to my video that shows how to get started and install Python uh, on Microsoft Windows. Okay, so it's not too hard. We're going to both install uh, Python 3 and we're going to install a text editor. And so I'm just going to go into Google and I'm going to say install Python 3. And my top link is downloading Python. And there is my link for downloading Python 3.5.2. Uh, this version of my class uses Python 3. I have an earlier class that uh, you may have seen that uses Python 2, but in this class uh, we're going to do this. Now it might take you a while to download this. I've actually already downloaded it. Now the other thing we need is a programmer text editor. And uh, you can really use any programmer text editor. We've, no we've used Notepad Plus in the past. We've used JEdit in the past. I like Atom, uh, Atom.io, T-O-M dot I-O, mostly because it works the same on Windows and Mac and Linux. Um, but you can really lose, use any uh, text editor that you like. Just don't use Word or, or text edit it that comes with the operating system. You need a programming editor that doesn't mess with weird characters or weird lines or strange formats. You must have a real programmer editor. So I'm gonna down, I've already downloaded this as well. And so um, I won't waste the time waiting to download it, but let's go ahead and do the installation. So um, these things, these things ended up in my, my downloads file. So I'll go to downloads and uh, I'll start installing Python 3.5.2. Now it's going to ask me some things. Um, add Python 3.5 to the path. Yeah, that's a good idea. Install the launcher for all users. I'm going to add that. Maybe you will, maybe you won't do that. It's going to tell me where it's going to install it. Install now. Of course, it's going to ask me for permission to do these things. And now it's running through the installation. Okay, so there we go. You could maybe click on this online tutorial and documentation, um, but uh, we're just gonna close this. And um, I'm gonna start and run the Windows command line. Now, you may have all kinds of fancy ways to run Python, but I like running the command line, C-O-M-M-A-N-D. I like running the command line because you, it's after a while, it's important to know what folder things are being run in. Um, and so here's this command line, and I should be able to type Python here. And so now I'm in Python 3.2, and this is the Chevron prompt here is the Python interpreter, where it's asking for Python commands, and I can say print. Hello world. Of course, this is what we tend to print all the time. I can make a mistake. I can say blah, blah, blah. right, and it'll complain to me. Now to get out of this, I can either type control Z or quit. In this case, I'm going to type control Z and I'm back to the prompt. A uh, couple of things. Uh, I can do a dir to see what folders and files I have and that is like my desktop. Um, and then the CD command uh, tells me where I'm at in the uh, folder. That means I'm in the user's directory, uh, Dr. Chuck. Okay, so I have now installed Python. I ran the Python interpreter to verify it. I said print hello world. Okay, and so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually install Atom. And I already had this downloaded, so let's go ahead and install Atom on my computer. Okay, so Adam is now installed and it's kind of um, telling us what to do. I'm going to actually just close all these windows, close this window, close everything, and I'm going to create a file. I'm going to say print, in this case, let's see if I can make this bigger. I can make it bigger. So I'm going to type print 
hello from a file. Okay, and I'm going to save this. I'm going to say file, save as, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my desktop and I'm going to make a folder on the desktop. I'm going to call this folder PY4E. So I now have a folder on the desktop. Move this here. I'll move this here. Oops. And uh, I'm going to go into PY4E. And then I'm going to name this file first.py. And you'll notice that when I save this, when I save this, it it syntax highlighted it. That's one of the nice things about a programmer editor. Okay, and so it says, oh, it's got a suffix of .py, so therefore it knows that it's supposed to look pretty with Python and make this one color, make this another color. The other thing that you'll notice is that I now have a folder called py4e. And if I am in this command line, let me just start that up again. I'll show you how to start the command line again. Command. Now, if I do a dir, I see the folders that I'm in, and one of the folders that you can see here is the desktop folder. So I'm going to say cd desktop, and then I'm going to type the dir command to see what folders are in the desktop. These folders are the same as these folders. These things are kind of virtual folders. py for e is py for e. Now I can type cd, which stands for change directory, py for e. And I can do a dir, and I see first.py. And that's the same as if I'm diving into this folder. Here's this file, first.py. Windows hides the suffix, which is somewhat annoying and frustrating. But um, that suffix is there, that file is there. there and, and so for me, one of the things you got to figure out in Windows is how to make sure that you are in the same folder, users, Dr. Chuck, desktop, py 4 e and that's this name of this file, and here as well. And now I'm going to run this program. I'm going to type python first.py. And you see that it ran the Python code. Okay? Another way you can do this is you can type first.py. And that's because this file association has happened in Windows. This doesn't work in Macintosh. This only works in Windows. That all files with .py are expected to be Python, and it knows the Python interpreter where to run it. Okay? And so I've got Python 3.0 installed, and that gets me started. And so I, I hope that this little introduction about getting things started and writing your first Python program has been helpful to you. Thank <laughs> you.